Portsmouth, 1818, a rapidly expanding industrial town with a growing working class. The streets were dirty and like a scene from Oliver Twist, orphan children roamed about, more likely to beg and steal than to read and write. Nearly 200 years later, we tend to take free education for granted. But in the 19th century... Schooling was for the privileged elite, really, the middle classes. That meant hundreds of thousands of children went without even the basics in education. That is, until one Portsmouth man came along. He recognised the plight of the poor kids in ragged clothing, and he decided to do something about it. He was known as the crippled cobbler, John Pounds. From his shop window in central Portsmouth, he saw the plight of the destitute and noticed a boy, disabled like himself, with a family on the breadline. He offered to take the young boy in and give him an education. This would be the start of a very important movement. John Pound started to teach the boy from his cobbler shop. Before long, his improvised school grew by visiting the streets and the quays of Portsmouth, offering deprived and hungry children bits of clothing or food if they would come to his shop for lessons in the three R's. Before long, he was teaching around 40 children from two tiny little rooms. In homage to his philanthropy, a reconstruction of his shop has been built here at the John Pounds Memorial Unitarian Church. This room is the exact size of John Pound's shop, but I'm not sure the waxworks are quite so accurate. John Pounds will not only teach reading and writing and Bible studies, but also traditional skills and crafts like shoemaking and carpentry, leatherwork and cooking. He gave every child their chance to work their way out of poverty. And relatives of his students live on to appreciate the work he did. I spoke to one of the locals, Pat Instead. Pat, you have a very special connection with John Pounds. Yes, my great-great-grandmother and her sister were pupils of John Pounds. They lived in St Mary Street, which was just along the road from here. Mm -hmm. Their parents couldn't afford to send them to a paying school, mm. so they went to John Pounds School. When he used to teach the children, he always had the, the top of his door open and people would walk past and say, um, could you teach my children? And he would say, as long as you can't afford to pay. How did you find out they were educated here? My great uncle told my sister and I that the two little girls in the picture of John Pounds with their arms around each other were my great great grandmother and her sister. And Amelia and Georgina. They obviously came from a very, very poor family. They, they got an education. Yes. What became of them? I'm not quite sure about Georgina. Anne Amelia, she got married um, to another bootmaker and mm. they had a shop in St Mary Street. And helping her run a business, obviously, would have been that education that she got from John Pounds. Oh, definitely, definitely, yes. <laughs> By the 1830s, schools such as Pounds were opening up in shops, barns and stables all across the country. And they were even given a name, Ragged Schools, to teach the children whose ragged clothes belied their impoverished circumstances. The Ragged School movement created in the model of John Pounds' humble shop went countrywide by the mid-19th century. And John Pounds wasn't the only local advocate. Charles Dickens, who was born in Portsmouth, visited one of the ragged schools. And the visit compelled him to write to the Daily News, imploring them that... Those excellent persons who aid munificently in the building of new churches to think of these ragged schools to reflect whether some portion of their rich endowments might not be spared for such a purpose. Dickens' visit to Field Lane Ragged School made such a lasting impression on him, and it's thought that was the inspiration for the writing of A Christmas Carol. The Ragged School Union put pressure on the state to The success of the Ragged School demonstrated the need for schooling for all. And in 1870, the Elementary Education Act encouraged poor children into schooling by paying their fees. Free education and the model of today's schooling system was born. And that's thanks in part to a philanthropic shoemaker from Portsmouth. 
What does all this mean to you, finding out that John Pound's educated them? Oh, I'm so proud, and I really like to let as many people as I can know about John Pound's. A remarkable man.